stop! People of Ammonihah, I am Amulek, a descendant of Nephi who is the son of Lehi. I am a man of no small reputation among all those who know me. I was called by the Lord many times and I would not hear, but I went on rebelling against God. As I was journeying to see a very near kindred, an angel of the Lord appeared unto me and said, Amulek, return to thine own house. And I obeyed the voice of the angel, and I found the man whom the angel said to receive into my house. Behold, it was this same man who has been speaking unto you concerning the things of God. You say an angel hath made these things unto you? O ye wicked and perverse generation, ye lawyers and hypocrites, for ye are laying traps and snares to catch the holy ones of God. Ye are laying plans to pervert the ways of the righteous even unto the utter destruction of this people. If it were not for the prayers of the righteous, he would even now be visited with utter destruction. If he will cast out the righteous from among you, then will not the Lord stay his hand? And the time is soon at hand, except he repent. This man doth revile against our laws, which are just, and our wise lawyers, whom we have selected. Why hath Satan got such great hold upon your hearts? Have I testified against your law? I have not. I have spoken in favor of your law to your condemnation. The foundation of the destruction of this people is beginning to be laid by the unrighteousness of your lawyers and judges. Now we know this man is a child of the devil, for he hath lied unto us, for he hath spoken against our law, and now he says he has not spoken against it. Will ye answer me a few questions which I shall ask you? Yea, if it be according to the spirit of the Lord which is in me, for I shall say nothing which is contrary to the Spirit of the Lord. Behold, here are six onties of silver, and all these will I give thee, if thou wilt deny the existence of a supreme being. O oh, thou child of hell, why tempt ye me? Knowest thou that the righteous yieldeth to no such temptations? Believest thou that there is no God? Say unto you, Nay, thou knowest that there is a God, but thou lovest that lucre more than him. Thou hast lied before God unto me. Thou saidst, I will give unto thee six onties, when thou hadst it in thy heart to retain them from me. And it was only thy desire that I should deny the true and living God, that thou might have cause to destroy me. Thou sayest there is a true and living God? Yea, there is a true and living God. Is there more than one God? No. How knowest thou these things? An angel hath made them known unto me. Who is he that shall come? Is it the Son of God? Yea. Shall he save his people in their sins? He shall not, for it is impossible for him to deny his word. See that ye remember these things. For he said, there is but one God. Yet he saith that the Son of God shall come, but he shall not save his people, as though he had authority to command God. Behold, thou hast lied. And I say unto thee again that he cannot save them in their sins, for I cannot deny his word. He hath said that no one clean thing can inherit the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, how can ye be saved except ye inherit the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, ye cannot be saved in your sins. The Son of God shall come into the world to redeem his people, and he shall take upon him the transgressions of those who believe on his name. And these are they that shall have eternal life, and salvation cometh to none else. Therefore the wicked remain as though there had been no redemption made, except it be the loosing of the bands of death. For behold, the day cometh that all shall rise from the dead and stand before God, and be judged according to their works. The death of Christ shall loose the bands of death, that all shall be raised from death. The spirit and the body shall be reunited again in its perfect form. Both limb and joint shall be restored to its proper frame, even as we now are at this time. And we shall be brought to stand before God, knowing even as we know now, and have a bright recollection of all our guilt. This restoration shall come to all, both old and young, both bond and free, both male and female, both the wicked and the righteous, and even there shall not so much as a hair of their heads be lost. But everything shall be restored to its perfect frame. And they shall be brought before the bar of Christ the Son, and God the Father and the Holy Spirit, which is one eternal God. 
to be judged according to their works, whether they be good or whether they be evil. This mortal body is raised to an immortal body that is from death, even from the first death unto life, that they can die no more. Their spirits uniting with their body is never to be divided. Thus the whole becoming spiritual and immortal, that they can no more see corruption. <laughs>